Son of a bitch. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door One of the most polished Paper Mario games and a fan favourite, it's also a pretty solid entry in the series glitch-wise. But even though it's not a complete train wreck like another game starring Paper Mario, <laughs> the glitches in The Thousand Year Door range from incredibly useful to just plain weird. So with that being said, let's check out some of the random glitches on offer. In Pedalberg, there are three random glitches you can perform, the first one involving Yoshi. On this ledge outside Kroop's house, if you ride Yoshi towards the edge and then switch direction, you'll randomly fall through the floor. Down here you can see some weirdness like this abomination. I don't even know why this. Actually I do, but it's a secret. Going into this house with Koops as your partner, if you stand behind the chair and then press X to kick his shell, Koops will go through the floor. He'll be temporarily stuck until you move far enough to the right or leave the house entirely. You just keep having a good time there Koops, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave now. Another similar glitch can be done with Flurry. Stand by Croup's front door until you can see the exclamation point on screen. Now press X followed immediately by A and if timed correctly, Flurry will blow Mario into Croup's house and through the floor. Seriously, does everything just go through the floor in this game? Is, is, it, is it a theme? You're now able to move around under the house and even venture outside it where everything is now black since the game thinks you're indoors. You can speak to the NPCs as normal even though they're not visible. Going into another house in Pedalberg will correct the glitch for the most part except when you go to Kroop's house, well it kinda looks like this. Hey, I really like what you've done with the place. Modern, spacious, the indoors, outdoors, it's nice. I think Kroop's has lost it guys, let's move on. The previous glitch was thanks to something called a flurry super slide and it can be used in a variety of ways. Head to the lovely house of badges in Rogueport and stand in front of the door with the exclamation point on screen. Press X followed immediately by A to perform the flurry super slide and Mario will be blown off the ledge by Flurry, but the interior of the bad shop will load. Similar to the previous glitch, you'll now be in an unloaded rogue port and everything is blacked out, though you're still able to interact with NPCs and open doors. Open the door to the regular shop directly below where the bad shop would be and you'll be able to see the bad shop above. Leaving the shop will load rogue port correctly and now you can go back to the bad shop. As you enter the bad shop, the selection hand cursor will appear on screen before you're even inside. Now, if you go to buy a badge of any kind, the second you buy the item, it'll become an invalid item. This possibly occurs because the game duplicates the flag that checks whether the badge has been purchased or not and sets it to both purchased and not purchased at the same time, rendering it invalid. And when you leave the shop, you'll take the hand cursor with you. I don't like you, and I don't like you, and I really don't like you. You're okay. And when you leave the area, the cursor will go away. Performing the glitch a second time with it already being in effect will cause the badges to appear at coordinates 000, right in the middle of Rogueport Plaza, although you won't be able to interact with them. That's pretty strange. This glitch can be performed repeatedly and you'll end up with multiple hand cursors on screen, so that's cool, I think. One of the biggest uses of the flurry super slide though would be in a trick to get the ultra hammer early which is a Japanese version only glitch. Once you have flurry, go upstairs to the inn and leave through the back door towards the lovely house of badges. When you're outside, get into paper mode and then move right towards the door and then down right to get into the corner of the door and then exit paper mode. Now move directly left and then turn around. Now you need to do small jumps to the right, inching back towards the door until the exclamation point appears and here's where we'll perform the the flurry super slide. Press X and then A immediately after followed by three more presses of the X button in a rhythm. If this is performed correctly, Mario will be placed on the seam of the inn like so. But if you press X three times too quickly, Flurry will send Mario flying outside of the inn. Now Mario is on the seam, you want to do as little movement as possible as it's really easy to fall off the seam. Now press the R button to get into paper mode and you should see Mario drop ever so slightly indicated by the puff of air, and this will mean you're on the lower edge of the seam. If you're not on the lower edge of the seam, the trick won't work. In this case, stay in paper mode and tap left the tiniest amount and you should be on the lower edge. Now we need to get Mario in the correct position using tap jumps downwards to line Mario's feet up with the floor. If you exit paper mode and his feet are lined up like this, you're good to go. Now get back into paper mode, press left on the D-pad to get into the partner menu and then hold directly right on the control stick and unpause. This will let you move along the seam without falling off or going in bounds. And then you can exit paper mode once you're quite away along the seam. For reference, here's where you are in relation to the chests containing the Ultra Hammer. 
From here, we can jump to the right and land on top of the chest and then make small tap jumps downwards to land next to the chest. Facing right, we then need to make tiny turns to the left where an exclamation point will appear on screen for a few frames. We need to time an A button press when the exclamation point is on screen, and this will open the chest and give us the Ultra Hammer four chapters earlier than intended. This is a very difficult trick to get down, but once you understand it and the timing involved, it does get easier. Just remember to keep movements very small when on the seam and no big jumps. Tap jumps are the best way to line up and land in the right places. Now, as I said earlier, this is a Japanese version only glitch and won't work on the English versions. This has to do with the way the flurry super slide works in the Japanese version that differs from other versions. So unfortunately, no ultra hammer early in the English versions. Moving on to the great tree in chapter two and a trick called cage skip, which uses a glitch called Goombella buffering. In the room after the 100 jabby fight, have Goombella as your partner and stand in the doorway till Mario is lined up like this. Now we're going to press X followed immediately by right on the control stick. You have three frames with which Mario can move once Goombella has been activated. There's a definite timing to it and once you have it down, you can move beyond the load zone placed here. Once you're far enough right, you can just move normally and keep moving right until Goombella is no longer visible. Now into paper mode by pressing and holding the R button and then move directly up so you're against the wall. Switch to up left on the control stick until you see Mario back on screen and then move directly upwards. Mario is now out of bounds and you can see him in the background. Without moving too far into the background, move to the left while being sure not to go back inbounds and then you need to do small tap jumps upwards until Mario falls through the floor. As Mario falls, hold down on the control stick and once he lands by the pipe, continuously jump until you enter the pipe. As long as you continue to jump, you'll be able to take all the punies with you when performing this trick. This is a glitch in itself where the game seems to need a few frames for you to be completely on the ground before it realizes the punies aren't with you. This glitch can be used several several times in the great tree to skip having to take the punies with you through entire rooms to the pipes. This particular pipe is normally only accessible once you have the super boots which you get during the great tree escape sequence. The reason this trick is used in a speedrun is that it skips the cage the punies get trapped in. Once the trick is performed, you're able to carry on with chapter two, except the escape sequence is triggered twice. The first time when you enter the room with the emerald star, Lord Crump activates the timer and from here you would go on to get the super boots as normal. However, when you enter this pipe by the door again, you'll enter the room with the Emerald Star and the cutscene with Crump is triggered once more. The first timer is stopped and the second timer begins in its place, but the ticking you'll hear is from the first timer and it won't stop until you save and quit or until you reach chapter four. From here, you make your way to fight Lord Crump and Magnus Von Grapple as usual and after the fight, the chapter ends as expected. You'd now go on to chapter three, but depending on what version of the game you're playing, the next sequence of events will differ greatly. If you're playing an English version, of the game, which is more than likely, you'll have to play through chapter three all the way up until you receive the super hammer at rank number eight. And then you'd need to de-rank to rank number 11. Doing this is absolutely crucial. Once you have the super hammer and de-rank, head to chapter two and go to the cage we skipped earlier. Inside the cage is a floor panel you can spin jump and you'll see that Punio appears suddenly with a line of text and this will revert the game back to chapter two. This means you can now restart chapter three with the super hammer, but there's one very important step to do to to make sure you restart chapter three correctly. When the cutscene with the Yoshi egg begins, make sure that the first speech bubble text is displayed in full and then cancel it once the camera has panned outwards. This will ensure that this cutscene of Rorkork in the ring triggers, meaning you successfully reverted the game back to the beginning of chapter three. Interestingly, having Yoshi at this point in the game when you shouldn't means he has no dialogue scripted and so you get no messages English displayed instead. From here, you'll need to continue chapter three as normal until you see Grubber and he gives you the guided tour around the different rooms. He'll eventually ask you if you want to sign up and here we need to say, I don't think so. This now gives us free access to Grubber's office and opens up the next sequence break glitch, the bookcase jump. We need to stand on top of the couch on the red part roughly here. Next, we need to hold up left on the control stick, jump and then spin jump and with great timing, we can land on top of the bookcase. This is a very precise jump and timing is everything. The first jump needs to be a full jump and Mario must be in motion. It cannot be a standing jump. The angle is also pretty precise. You're aiming for the corner of the bookcase and this is the perfect angle. And a well-timed spin jump will put Mario on the bookcase. As you're never meant to reach the bookcase 
from this side, the vent cover has no collision, so you're able to go right through it and this will trigger a cutscene that happens in the final section of chapter 3. And here's why you needed the super hammer. An upgraded hammer is the only way to break the vent cover from this side and continue to the end of the chapter. In the Japanese version of the game, after performing Ultra Hammer early, you could just begin chapter 3, decline Grubber's offer to sign up and then perform bookcase jump to proceed to the end of the chapter. But in the English versions, you need the super hammer which can only be obtained by playing a way into chapter 3 and getting to rank number 8. If you venture to the left in the vent, you'll end up in the champion's room. When you try leaving this room, security is blocking the door on the other side and so Mario is pushed out of bounds. There's not an awful lot you can do with this though, it's just funny to see. An even funnier thing you can do with the security guards is if you stand the correct distance away from them, they'll move backwards and forwards repeatedly in a kind of rhythm. Oh yeah, those are some sweet moves, security is tight. There's a way to enter chapter 4 without using Yoshi in a trick fittingly called Yoshi Skip. It basically involves using the Spaniards in Rogueport sewers. You set up the skip by luring one of them to a spot where they get stuck. Like here, the one on the right is now stuck on the wall and going nowhere. Now using Koop, space away from the Spanier and press and hold X to kick his shell. Next, get into the corner of this wall and stand on the bottles and here you want to release X and then do a full jump a few frames later. If Mario looks like this when the encounter begins, you'll have a good shot at the next step. You need to run away from this fight and then hold down left on the control stick. As the screen fades from black into the gameplay, there is one frame where it's possible to jump whilst already in the air. This gives Mario the height to then spin jump around 12 frames later. If performed correctly, this will place Mario on the ledge that would usually require Yoshi to get to and from here you can get to Twilight Town early. In a speed run, this incredibly difficult trick is performed twice. Once to get rejected from the pipe to Twilight Town and the second to actually enter it after visiting the Thousand Year Door and also speaking to Darkly. It takes an amazing amount of tries to get this one down with frame perfect inputs so don't expect to get it on the first try despite how easy it looks. It's also possible to get up to this higher ledge using only one full jump and holding the control stick up left. Doing the skip this way is considered a lot easier due to the difficult timing on the spin jump version. Though overall the trick is something you'll need to practice many times before getting it. This next glitch is called Fish Glitch and it makes it possible to reach chapters 5 and 6 early. This glitch requires Miss Mouse and takes place in the rogue port sewers next to this stone block. The technique to this is very similar to Goombella buffering in that when you press X you have a few frames to move in any direction until Miss Mouse text bubble appears on screen. Doing this near to water is the key to fish glitch and largely why it got the name. Stand close to the edge with Miss Mouse and press X and quickly move to fall into the water. A text bubble appears on screen and Mario will shoot into the air. As he does so, cancel the text bubble quickly and hold upright on the control stick. This will place Mario on top of the stone block and now you can jump on the blue switch and spin jump to activate the blue pipes to chapters 5 and 6. You could perform fish glitch once again, but an easier way to get back up to the ledge with the pipes is to position yourself like this on the blue switch, spin jump and then hold down on the control stick. Mario will fall in the water but the game will always put Mario on the last solid ground he stood on, in this case the higher ledge. So now you can enter chapters 5 and 6 early. This fish glitch has some interesting side effects. If done where enemies are on screen, they'll freeze in place and no longer be able to enter an encounter with Mario. In some cases, changing the timing of the text bubble cancel can make Mario appear invisible, with only the dust he kicks up to let you know where he is on screen. Going into a different area or falling in water again will fix this. Fish glitch has other uses we'll get to later, but now that we're in chapter 5 early, we can do a few other things early too. This next glitch will get bobbery into your party early and can be done as soon as you've fish glitched your way into chapter 5. Go to the place where the entrance to Pirate's Grotto is located and have Goombella as your partner. Head to the very left of the screen and enter paper mode and move left until you stop. Now hold directly down to line up with the load zone and next we're going to Goombella buffer a few times to get past the load zone trigger. We can now move directly upwards to make our way around to stand inside this rock here. With Mario positioned exactly like this, switch to using Yoshi. Next we want to head directly right until we reach this rock here where we want to move upwards ever so slightly and then continue moving right. When you reach this point here, line Mario up with the top of the dark line that looks like an arrow pointing right. If Mario looks like this, you should be good to tap up slightly to fall through the ground. Once you reach about this point here, hold down on the control stick and you should bump into the embers below. And this will trigger the ember fight that occurs while rescuing Bobbery. If you're wondering why they're down here, the game stores unused 
used NPCs at coordinate 0, minus 1000, 0. The more you know. After winning the Ember fight, Mario continues falling, only to be put on solid ground again. Now, go to the palm tree and hammer it where Bobbery will fall out of it. But he needs Chocola Cola, so trade the coconut with Flavio and then return to Bobbery to give him the cola and he'll join you. Now that we have Bobbery, we can do another early trick in the same area. In fact, it's pretty much the same trick as getting Bobbery, only it'll get us into Pirate's Grotto early instead. So, repeat all the steps to getting Bobbery early until you reach this part here, where we now want to continue going right until we reach the entrance to Pirate's Grotto. Stand here and press X to jump off Yoshi, and then press and hold the R button to enter paper mode. Move directly downwards until the camera begins moving, and when you reach this point, switch out to Bobbery. Throw Bobbery using X, and then enter paper mode and move left out of the rock. Now move right against the rock, and once it blows up, you'll enter Pirate's Grotto. This is a pretty cool trick that skips a few things in Chapter 5, and also uses a glitch called Cutscene Walk at the end. You don't have to step out of the rock and enter paper mode, but when you do this, you avoid having to watch a glitchy cutscene that plays out because Flavio isn't present. Triggering certain cutscenes while being in paper mode enables Mario to keep moving during it, and this is used in Pirate's Grotto early. Bobbery can be used to carry out a number of glitches in the Japanese version of the game, specifically a trick called Teleporter Room Early. This glitch is similar to Ultra Hammer Early, although to set it up, you'll need to perform what's known as the Bobbery glitch, which is also Japanese only. Press and hold X to pick up Bobbery, and then press and hold the R button. Now hold up against the door so that the exclamation point appears. Just as Bobbery explodes, press A to open the door. This will put Mario in paper mode as he goes through the door. You'll want to switch from holding up on the control stick to holding left. And you can also let go of the R button now. Quickly mash left on the D-pad to open the partner menu, and now switch to using Flurry. You'll now need to perform the Flurry Super Slide much like with Ultra Hammer early. If the Flurry Super Slide looks Looks like this, you'll have successfully reached the teleporter room early. You won't be able to see inside it, but you can activate the switch and then enter the teleporter. At the other end, you can press the red button and then enter the teleporter once again. This now means you have free access to the teleporter room for the rest of the game. In a speed run, this skips grabbing the six crystal star, the peach and bowser into missions, far outpost, and the general white hunt, so it's a huge trick. The bobbery glitch can be used to more comedic effect in the Poshley Heights Hotel. Performing the same steps as in Teleporter Room early, you can make Mario speak to the Toad while in paper mode. By choosing to stay at the hotel, a cutscene begins where you stay for the night, and this all happens while Mario is still in paper mode. The next morning, things are about to get weird. Mario will now wake up and decide today is a good day for sliding everywhere. He'll enter the elevator and go down to the lobby, where if you continue holding the R button, Mario can stay in this glitchy paper mode. You can move around as usual, the only difference is, is that Mario is now completely flat, and letting go of the R button will return Mario to normal again. You can perform the bobbery glitch on the door before Magnus Von Grapple 2.0. The cutscenes will all feature paper mode Mario, and then, once you beat this boss, something truly amazing will happen. At this point in the story, we go into a Bowser intermission, and if we continue holding the R button for the duration of this cutscene, Bowser will now also be in paper mode. Can I just point out, Bowser doesn't have paper mode. This is crazy. Now, nothing about this is normal, but everything about it is hilarious. Bowser can move around in paper mode and breathe fire. I really shouldn't have eaten those spicy meatballs. It burns! Bowser can even get into tube mode and roll around the place, but this can have weird effects if you jump while he's like this. The game will lock your Y speed, base speed, and your current angle, and since these are locked, you'll float around instead of rolling. Going up the stairs while rolling will take Bowser out of his paper mode state, but his hitbox will be really weird and parts of him will clip through walls. He'll also fall through certain parts of the ground, and in this case, you'd have to reset as there's no way to stop him falling. Well, there goes the fun, I guess. Before we head to the end of the game, let's check out some of the funnier and stranger glitches. At the train station, you can randomly get out of bounds by standing on this ledge and jumping off the very edge while holding upright. There's not much that can be achieved with this apart from being able to go through the train which isn't solid, but congratulations, there's no way back in bounds, so you're stuck here. If you enter paper mode on the edges of certain things, Mario can freak out. Like here, he'll do this on the edge of the stairs. If you do it on the edge of the chair in Poshley Heights Hotel, you'll get this. 
Somebody help me! Another sweet move Mario has is the ability to walk backwards. This is done by entering paper mode, jumping, and then mid-jump letting go of the R button. You then need to tap jump as soon as Mario lands, and if done correctly, Mario will spin jump in an odd way. Holding the control stick in the opposite direction Mario is facing will now let Mario move backwards. It's moonwalking Mario! In the great tree you have these doors with switches next to them. With a green light, press the switch to deactivate the door, and if you can get to the door and open it before the light turns red, you can go through it. But this will softlock the game as it thinks both Mario and his partner are still on the other side of the door, and the only way to fix it is to reset the console. The two final skips in the game happen just outside of Riddle Tower during Chapter 8. The first is another use of the fish glitch from earlier to skip a blue switch in the background. You only need to hit the blue switch on the right side of Riddle Tower, and then stand at the very corner of this statue. Now perform fish glitch exactly like before, and you'll be able to stand inside the statue. From here, just press Y to get into boat mode and then sail towards Riddle Tower. The camera will be locked in place so it's hard to make out, but when you reach the other side, simply press Y again to exit boat mode and then you're able to enter Riddle Tower. The second skip in this area is the Shadow Siren skip, which as you might imagine, skips this particular fight. There's a trigger after this bridge that if you step into it, a cutscene will play. But by jumping around to the left, you can land outside of the trigger and then just head to the palace doors, which saves around two minutes in a speedrun. And now, the best glitch in the game, the one you've all been waiting for, the adventures of Flavio. Earlier we used the fish glitch to enter chapter 5 and 6 early, but during chapter 5, Flavio joins you for a short time. He's intended to be left in Chapter 5, but because we skip a lot of the events of 5, and enter Chapter 6 to carry on with the game normally, it turns out Flavio can stay with you for the rest of the game, and this is where hilarity ensues. Flavio is always set to follow Mario, and so he's in pretty much every cutscene for the remainder of the game, often coming out of nowhere just off screen to see what's going on. On the train when you should be hiding, Flavio will just stand there like, dude, you're, you're kinda giving away the game. Characters will often go right through through Flavio during a cutscene, or on one occasion, Flavio and Bobbery can merge to become this. Flavio is also loaded into cutscenes in very odd ways, like in the middle of an ocean, or in the middle of an ocean with a pirate ship going through him. Flavio will even switch sides when he's loaded into the Bowser intermissions. He'll just be hanging out with the enemy. During the Bowser 2D stages, Flavio even rushes on screen if Bowser falls into the lava and dies. He's like, boo! One particular Peach intermission gets a little weird when you get Peach to take a shower. Flavio is just like, hi Peach! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hmm. <laughs> oh, ooh. <laughs> this is just, he's, he's right there at eye level. I mean, Peach, what's wrong with you? She comes out with this look, it's just nasty. The amount of times Flavio just seems really unfazed by everything going on around him. I mean, giant monster, nothing. Friends get shocked by Grotus, nothing. A giant hatch opens and a huge rocket emerges, nothing. And Flavio just loves to get stuck inside things and jump around a bunch, which is always a treat to watch. Flavio can be seen hanging out in space a lot too. Every time we get a shot of outer space, Flavio is just standing there, chilling. I think he might be a secret superhero too, always flying off to save the day. When the game is over and all is said and done, Mario and Peach are having a moment and bam, Flavio. He's here, he's there, he's everywhere. Flavio. In this scene, the game spawns Flavio over some water, and that doesn't work out so well. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. And even once the credits roll, Flavio. This is the greatest glitch in the game, full of moments that are just like, what? Flavio just makes an already great game that much greater. But there you have it guys, some random, useful, hilarious glitches you can try out in Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. If you like Paper Mario glitches, check out these glitches in the original Paper Mario or Mario & Luigi Paper Jam, it's even more broken than this game. A huge thanks to Solidified Gaming, Zephals, Malio, Al Malicious, Aldalaro5, Krona Keys, and everybody in the Paper Mario community. And if you like this episode, hit that like button, share it with everyone you know and love, but most importantly, please subscribe if you want to see more from the series. Head over to the Facebook page for the show. I post updates and sneak peeks to upcoming episodes and keep you guys in the know about all things Son of a Glitch. Or you can follow me on Twitter and keep updated that way, you know, if you want to. 